This is always fun. For those of you that have been with us before, we all we all think it's kind of funny that we're live streaming on YouTube. Never before did we think we'd be. I don't know. Are we famous yet, you guys? Are we? <laughs> are we influencers on YouTube? I don't know. Okay, are we ready, Natalia? I think now we are. I think now we're actually live. Yep, we are. Okay. Okay. So um, we'll get started. So, so welcome everybody. I am Dr. Deirdre Pickerel. I'm the Dean of Student Success at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. And on behalf of the Student Success team and specifically the Career Services team, I'm really thrilled today to welcome you to another one of our bi-weekly Career Services webinar. Today's topic is finding work during COVID-19. And, um, you know, we, we know that there's been some incredible losses, but also still some gains in the labor market. Natalia's gonna talk to you today about, you know, specific ways to, to look for work and to find work um, during this time of our global pandemic that doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. We are joined today by Linda Folster, career advisor uh, attached to the, um, I was always going to say New Brunswick, New Westminster campus, and, Ale and Alexi Verakin is here from our Ontario Steels campus. But of course, as you all know, Career Services uh, serves all students across all programs, all brands, York University, Toronto Film School. So even if you don't have a career advisor attached to your specific campus, we are here to help you. Now, just as we begin, um, we do want to acknowledge that the land Yorkville University operates on in British Columbia, where I personally am located, is the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Kakaik and Kwikwetlem First Nations. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to your host today, Natalia, and uh, I'm going to exit stage left. There is a Q&A panel at the end, and Linda's going to um, coordinate your questions. Uh, enjoy the session, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks for another Career Services webinar. So, Natalia, over to you. Thank you, Deidre, for uh, introducing us. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Natalia Markman. I'm one of the three career advisors with Toronto uh, Film School, York University. Um, and today we are going to be talking about finding work during COVID-19. Um, if you are following our webinars, um, you probably know that we, um, uh, how we divide our services and webinars is by four main topics. So exploring uh, job market, preparing for work, finding work, and also maintaining your career um, when you're working. So today we are going to be talking about finding work. So what actions you can take to actually secure a job opportunity but also with a twist, because obviously in the last years, uh, in the last year, everyone is really worried about what's happening with jobs, especially if you were a student and you're just starting your path, you know, you're just starting to look for a job or preparing to, you know, uh, start looking for a job. You're probably worried about how it's going to be for you, uh, what you need to do maybe different um, than before you were a student in order to secure those jobs. So we decided that putting together this webinar is gonna be extremely important for you to understand what have changed in the job market um, in the past year and what are some new realities for uh, both employers and, and the job seekers. A little bit about myself. Um, I have about five years of experience working mainly in a non-for-profit sector. So before I came into Toronto Film School, I was working in social services uh, with um, people who are looking for jobs, uh, newcomers. Uh, um, in the last couple of years, I was focusing on youth um, pre-employment groups. So I was teaching them how to look for a job, especially if they have some barriers to employment. And I've always uh, been passionate about helping clients get uh, their confidence um, before they start looking for work and know what are the, their strengths so they can share it with uh, their potential employer. I do have Masters of Immigration Assessment Studies from Ryerson University, and I'm with Toronto Pope School from uh, November of last year. Uh, I would like to start with a question, like uh, Deidre mentioned, we are using a program that's called Menti. Um, so you can see it on the top of my screen. Um, you can use your phone for that, or your uh, laptop, or your tablet. Um, just put www.menti.com and use the code that's on the screen. Alexia and Linda, if you can, uh, one of you can please put this code uh, in the chat for our participants. It's 89650412. 
all of your responses are um, anonymous. So you're not gonna see your name. I'm not gonna know who responded to that. And I just wanna ask you one simple question. What are your top three concerns about looking for work during the pandemic? Please respond via Menti because then we're gonna see, see it on the screen rather than uh, in the chat. Anybody? What are your main worries? What are you afraid of, um, you know, looking forward during this uh, situation in the world right now? Okay, we have some responses coming in. Uh, that the work will be cut abruptly. Oh, so you're gonna like lose a job, I'm assuming. No jobs, employer op optioning for more experienced workers as uh, for students. Okay, anything else? Not enough jobs available, working on site not safe. Yeah, that's one of the main concerns uh, for people nowadays. Not confident because feeling down. Oh, I can totally re relate to that. Working from home for the last year, I can definitely relate to that. Because I'm that kind of person who loves to go to the office and talk to my colleagues. Having to work on site, so I see a common theme here. Uh, higher qualified people will be taken, need to be too unique as a beginner. Don't want to catch COVID. So definitely we have a lot of responses about um, this worry about uh, being on site. Not enough experience, lack of opportunities, um, lack of experience, not able to relocate for work due to pandemic. That's another legit concern. Looking for work when we come to Toronto. Uh, employers are hesitant to onboard new, uh, new graduates. Working from home experience. Economy is low. What else? Anybody else? Okay, I think uh, these are all main concerns we have. So I definitely see a common theme here uh, is definitely, you know, people are afraid of getting sick. Um, obviously, yes, we know that we're getting, um, you know, the rollout of vaccines, but it is still quite slow. And um, for some of us who are um, you know, younger than certain age, we're, we're not going to get it for another few months at least. So um, definitely, you know, it's, um, it's a concern that uh, you have um, going back to, uh, to work, how to stand out from others. So I definitely see two common things. So people just afraid of COVID related stuff and people are afraid of, um, you know, overall concerns that everybody has before they start looking for work um, as a graduate. Um, so not just pandemic related, but also overall uh, concern about looking for work, starting your career path. And we are going to talk about, you know, what, what are some strategies that you can use to, uh, to look for a job um, overall, and especially in today's um, situation as well. Thank you all for your responses. Um, so in our new reality, we are all um, working from home and some of you who need to look for a job, you need to look for a job from your couch basically. And it might sound frustrating and I'm actually one of those people who landed a job during the pandemic and so as my, both of my colleagues on my team, we all, it happened, like we, we all got a job during the pandemic um, and um, you know, the world has not ended. There's, uh, you know, still jobs available. I know many people from my friends and family members and my uh, colleagues and former colleagues, people I worked with as, uh, as my clients as well, who found job, um, you know, during pandemic or who even switched from one job to another because they had a goal and they continue to basically be persistent about their goal. Um, so there's always going to be movement uh, in the labor market because we as people, we have needs, we need certain things, we buy things, we spend money. So there's obviously some movement um, going on in the job market always. Um, so change is basically a double-sided coin. So yes, we, we do have a loss. Uh, some people lost their jobs, but there's also new opportunities opening up for, for people in specific, in specific industries, especially. So you just need to start um, changing your mindset, opening up for uh, new opportunities, getting more creative about your job search. And uh, today I am gonna share some more creative way 
um, instead of just sitting and applying on Indeed. And that's the first question I ask all my uh, students I work with. How are you looking for a job? And I hear the word Indeed in almost every appointment that I have with every student. And there's so many other ways of looking for a job, especially now. Indeed is not you know, the only option for you. There's so many other possibilities that you can use. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about it today as well. Um, we also need to keep in mind that expectations of employers are uh, of, of the employers uh, are changing. And we as job seekers, we need to adjust to their uh, new expectations that they have because they had to pivot as well because they have businesses they need to run. So they, they had to come up with some uh, new solutions for, um, you know, problems they had during the pandemic. So um, just to let you know, career services are here for you. So if you have any additional questions after this webinar about anything I, I presented on, or if you need any templates, examples, or anything like that, just reach out to us directly. And I'm going to share our contact information at the end as well. Agenda for today, uh, I'm going to share a little bit of the stats, uh, very new information, uh, statistics uh, about unemployment, what, what is happening in the job market right now. We're going to learn about how pandemic has affected the Canadian uh, labor market. Um, I'm going to share five best ways to look for uh, work during the pandemic. So like I said, uh, aside from indeed, what else we can do? Um, we're going to talk about employers' new expectations um, that they have to job seekers and how we as job seekers should respond to that. Um, and I'm going to share some strategies for finding work um, in basically any economic downturn, right? This is not the first time in the job market where uh, when something happened, uh, you know, financial defaults, all of these things were happening before Great Depression, if you go back in time. So there's always some change going on in the job market. And, um, you know, hopefully it's going to get better, obviously, after this pandemic. But we need to be prepared and we need to be open minded um, and be more creative about uh, our strategies. Uh, I'm also going to share some additional uh, job seekers uh, tips about how to adjust uh, to new realities and how to make sure that you stand out from the crowd when you're looking for a job. Um, this quote explains a lot and definitely can be, um, you know, relevant to many of us. Um, plan, update, resume, search for work from home jobs, clean out the closet, join an exercise light, fast, catch up on emails. Reality, eat another bowl of ramen, take free naps. Um, I can definitely relate to that. Uh, some of you said that you're feeling down, you're feeling unmotivated to look for work. Um, and um, this is how many of us are feeling right now. Um, you need to find ways, uh, you need to find strategies. How do you motivate yourself? How to you know, uh, adjust your work to find some disciplining methods for yourself uh, so you can um, you know, still do everything you need to do from home. And I'm sure all of you, because you were a student and that was your job that you were doing in the last year, you were a student, you had to do some team projects, you still need to, uh, to work with your um, coworkers, not sorry, not coworkers, team members that uh, you had for, for your projects, you guys still had to do all this from home. You had to find ways to communicate with each other. You had to find ways to discipline yourself to, you know, uh, hand in your projects, your essays, your, you know, um, any other projects that you might have um, for school. Um, and when you're finding a job and you're going to maybe, you know, working from home as well, you need to find ways how to still um, get your motivation, still do your work, maybe, um, you know, planning out your days or allocating some uh, time for your uh, work. Uh, so that also takes some uh, adjustment and discipline. And we all had to go through this. This is the new reality at the moment. And uh, we're going to talk about that later in the presentation. Some of that might still stay, um, you know, for longer. I know a lot of people who got their job, the new job that they got, it said, permanently remote. Um, and I know many people who actually moved out from Toronto because they got uh, permanently remote jobs and you know they don't see a point of staying here because they don't need to go to the office. So they just moved out from Toronto for cheaper areas. Um, so some employers realize that they don't have to pay for rent. They don't have to you know, pay for utilities. They don't have to have an office because everyone is working pretty well and adjusted working from home. So this reality might still be, um, you know, permanent reality for some people. 
while some some people will have to go back to work eventually uh, um, when the vaccines are um, rolled out, when everyone gets vaccinated, um, you know, with situation in the world uh, changing, some of us might have to go back um, to work. So let's talk stats. Um, I think it's important to share some, some statistics with you because, um, you know, it represents what, what's actually happening in the job market uh, with numbers. So obviously impact of COVID-19 on the labor market uh, has been pretty severe. You probably all watch TV, have social media, you hear about that every single day and it doesn't sound too positive, right? Um, so let's, let's uh, see what was actually happening. So in the first two months, March and April of 2020, Canada lost more than 3 million jobs uh, from the workforce of just over 19 million people in total. The worst months were April and May, uh, and then there was a bounce back um, with uh, nearly 2.4 million jobs added between May and September. We had a pretty good summer. We didn't have a lockdown in the summer, so it was kind of getting better. And obviously, we got a second wave hit uh, in uh, September, October. Um, so the recovery from that initial loss was uh, getting a bit slower. So overall, as of October 2020, and this is the most recent data available um, when this webinar was actually developed, employment levels were are approximately 635,000 workers below the February peak and employment. Um, obviously, there are some groups that were uh, hit the most, um, you know, for example, youth who take a lot of uh, customer service jobs, for example, you know, in the summer working in restaurants, Wonderland, you know, tourism, hospitality, um, all of this is closed. We're still in lock lockdown. So, um, you know, many youth uh, lost their jobs. Uh, retail, hospitality industries, um, specific industries like airlines, for example, uh, food and beverage, clothing stores, um, you know, they had to either limit, uh, you know, amount of people who work there. Uh, or just shut down completely. Um, so those, um, uh, you know, um, groups of people were hit the most. Um, on the, your screen, you can actually see a, an unemployment uh, rate in Canada in 2020 by province. Um, and uh, Canada overall, so a 9.5 unemployment rate. Uh, and this is a huge increase from 5.6 in 2019. Um, many of you, um, as students, you're probably uh, from Ontario. Ontario um, saw 9.6 unemployment um, in 2020, comparing to 5.9 uh, the year before. And um, from, uh, if you're a student from BC, your province increased from um, unemployment rate increased from 4.7 in 2019 to 8.8 percent .8 uh, last year, which is also pretty sad. Uh, but, like I said, it's a double-sided coin. So when some industries are shrinking, other industries are growing really fast. Um, and I see a lot of people in, um, you know, with specific um, professions or specific skill sets uh, getting hired pretty quickly. Customer service all switched to um, online. Um, so people in customer service, uh, delivery drivers, we all order food, we all order clothes, stuff from Amazon, you know, things from Walmart, your groceries, whatever you, um, you know, you need, there are delivery drivers who can get it to your home. Um, IT and support desk specialists, obviously we are working from home. If something happens with my computer, I go to York University tech support and they have to fix it because I'm working from home. So that's their job to make sure that our job is not being affected by any technical um, issues. So uh, they're obviously in demand right now. Uh, supply chain specialists, uh, just because people still buying stuff, people still need things and there's supply chains everywhere, um, you know, and people who work, uh, who work there. Warehouse workers, for obvious reasons, um, Working from home jobs, anything that can be done from home with your laptop or documents can be done from home, basically. So any admin related uh, work, uh, HR, finance, whatever, you name it. Um, IT specialists, security analysts and architects. Uh, so if you have a computer, you can work from home, basically. Um, if you don't need like special equipment, you know, um, 
you can work from home. Um, and many people who thought they would never be able to work from home, they actually ended up working from home. For example, I was in social services, like I said, and when we, we had this uh, first wave hit in March, we were told um, we're working from home, you have two weeks to figure it out, but we were gonna start running our uh, youth pre-employment groups like in two weeks. So figure out your new curriculum, figure out how you're gonna do in-class activities online. We didn't know how to do it. I had to switch my whole thing, my whole work uh, processes to, uh, to make sure that I still serve my clients, I still meet with them. And a job that I never thought I'll be able to do from home, I, was, I, I had to, and I had to adjust and find new ways. And uh, so as many people, um, you know, in my organization, any other job that, you know, people were not sure how they're going to pivot, but they did, actually. Um, and, you know, to this day, I still do mock interviews with students who work with me and the resume review. And I still do we webinars instead of in-class workshops. So we, we adjusted um, and many businesses had to do the same. What else expanded? Essential retail and healthcare. Um, so obviously there's not so many people in retail, but uh, there are new, um, you know, online stores have opened, so they needed people as well. Cleaners, maintenance workers, and obviously healthcare professionals, um, because th there is a huge demand right now. All this information in, is from uh, a Global News article, so if you're interested, you can uh, go and uh, read the full article there. So let's talk about ways to find work during the pandemic. Um, so you can use it in any situation, but especially during the pandemic, these are the top things that you can do. So first of all, research employers, research industries that are actively hiring right now. So what I just showed you on the previous slide, uh, try to do some research um, online on your specific industry. Talk to your uh, instructors, uh, reach out to people in your industry who are currently working and ask them and ask them how did you adjust? What did you do? How your employer, uh, you know, made you change your processes? What what are some skills I need to put on my resume so I can be competitor for this industry? Talk to people who are currently working because they're going to be the most reliable source of information because they have been there through the pandemic. If they're still working, they probably changed something. So as as a new person entering this market, you need to find ways um, to enter. So Best bet is to talk to people who are already doing it. Conduct information interviews. We had a whole workshop on uh, networking and building connections. So if you're interested to know more, uh, I'm, I'm barely going to talk about it today, um, about informational interviews and networking. But that's, um, that's what you need to, uh, to do for, for looking for a job right now. So instead of just you know, applying online, reach out to people in your industry. Build new connections. Um, you know, we, we talked about it for, for an hour um, in our previous webinar. So we, we share a lot of tips and uh, examples for uh, cold calls, cold emails, how you can reach out to people and book those informational interviews where you can ask them questions about their job, about their responsibilities, about how they change their processes and um, how they're adjusting. Um, so try to, you know, make those connections as well instead of just applying for jobs. Add remote friendly words to written materials. Uh, we are gonna talk about that in more details in the next slides, but basically, um, you know, things that have to do with working from home, technology, show them that you're tech savvy, that uh, you know how to communicate with people, even if you're working in a different time zones, so in different places and not in the same office, working from home, um, you know, if, um, how how you're using shared documents, like if you know any programs that uh, allow you to share documents and work uh, with multiple individuals working on the same document. So use those uh, remote friendly words uh, to distinguish yourself from everybody else. Show them that you know how to do it. You were a student, even if you're not working um, uh, last year, you were a student. So like I said, you still had to do all of your work online. So I'm sure you acquired some remote skills that you can put on your resume and mention during your interview. Give examples. What did you do to complete a team project online um, while studying from home? That's going to be a great um, example for them of how you're adjusting. So they're going to you know, understand how you're going to be working as well um, in their uh, business. 
monitor social media for prospective jobs. Um, employers are heavily uh, relying on social media right now to look for, for people. Uh, obviously, LinkedIn is the first thing that comes to mind. But uh, especially if you're in a creative industry, like my Toronto Film School students, um, use other social media, use uh, Instagram, use Facebook to post some samples of your work. Um, obviously, make sure your profiles are professional. We are talking about that in our previous webinars. So if you want to know more about social media and how to use it for your job search, we did a webinar um, a month ago uh, specifically about social, social media and job search. Create job hunting systems and goals. So don't just apply for jobs for eight hours a day when you're looking for a job. Decide, I'm going to spend two hours for applying, two hours for finding new people in my industry. Uh, I'll set up an informational interview. I'm going to talk to that person. I'm going to do research on, um, on this company. So spread your time and kind of make it uh, more efficient than just sending hundreds of resumes uh, and not doing anything else. Okay, so we got to the main part of that presentation. What are the new realities? What are the new employer expectations um, that they have to their job seekers? And how we as job seekers can we can adjust? So um, I already mentioned use pandemic skills um, on your resume, on your cover letter, on, um, um, on, on your interview, provide a specific example. So um, think about some of the skills that can be used in your industry, but they can also be remote or pandemic, basically. Um, include those keywords and, uh, and accomplishments that uh, you had in the past year on your resume. Demonstrate some soft skills. How do you communicate with people? Talk about your tech skills as well. So um, make sure you use all these keywords and also check their job posting. Do they have any specific expectations from working from, uh, from home candidates? If they mention it on a job posting, make sure you use the same words on your resume and cover letter or portfolio, whatever uh, you need to have for your um, job search. Um, because when they get your resume, they're going to see all the things that they need from a candidate, and it's going to increase your chances of um, getting um, an interview. So let's think some key skills that you think became critical for job seekers during this pandemic. Please use Menti to respond so we can, we can see it on the screen. What do you think are some top skills that come to your mind? Um, Maybe that you developed during pandemic and you think might be useful when you're um, looking for a job. What are you planning to put in your resume? Again, the code is available on the screen in the top. Ooh, okay, self-care, self very important. Time management, definitely. Like, like we, we talked about disciplining ourselves, uh, of how we spend time on, on our work or assignments, definitely. Creative problem solving, communication, adaptability for sure, Zoom calls. We're all super tired of Zoom, but it's not going anywhere yet, so definitely Zoom calls. We have some responses in chat, organization skills. Hosting webinars, time management, uh, independent, yeah, working independently. So you don't have your manager with you in the office. How are you going to manage that? How you're going to do your training if you don't have your manage, uh, you know, manager beside you, you know, where you can just walk in, walk in their office and ask a question when you need to, to be trained. Um, so how are you going to navigate that situation? Self motivation for sure. Okay. Good, great responses. What else? Embracing innovation, for sure. That's a, that's a good one because everything is changing very fast. So we have to make sure that we're on top of, of that, especially technical part of it. Strong communication skills. Great responses. Thank you. So make sure you use all these words on your resumes and cover letters and mention it and give examples during your interviews. 
what else? What are some other expectations? Um, employers uh, will expect uh, some workers to, like I said, work permanently remote. Uh, so for some businesses, this model worked and that's what they're probably going to continue doing. Um, it's very possible. Um, oh, we have another great response. Able to time block. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, so, um, yes, for some of us, remote working is going to stay, but uh, some of us uh, might need to go back to the office. So uh, if you open, uh, open yourself up for both um, opportunities to work from home and to also, you know, uh, to the possibility of going back to the office at some point. Um, you know, obviously, um, some employers might be uh, more leaning towards uh, a person who will be okay with both. Um, another thing that came out uh, of remote working is the fact that now you're not only competing on the Canadian job market, but you're competing with people uh, nationally, globally. Um, so it might be, you know, um, person working you know, for Toronto company, working from Vancouver. Uh, I recently had a friend who got a job for an uh, American um, company. They only have like five people in Toronto, very, very small office. So her work is going to be remote for forever. Um, and that's a very um, common practice right now. Um, obviously, it's going to taper off a little bit uh, once vaccine um, is coming in. But, you know, uh, you have uh, to think it through for yourself. Are you okay with um, you know, after the vaccine to go back to work. If if yes, then you open yourself up for those uh, possibilities of working both from home and and uh, in the office, which is better for the employer because they might prefer both. Um, try to, as a job seeker, try to get creative on how you can distinguish yourself from other um, candidates, um, you know, being online. So maybe create a, a uh, blog, you know, showing your leadership skills. Uh, if you volunteered somewhere, trying to post about it on your LinkedIn, create a video introduction, for example, that you can send to your potential employers or people that you want to get an informational interview with. Um, if you don't have, a, you know, a website portfolio, if it's not really needed for your work, think about it. I know that for creative industries, you, you have to have a portfolio that's probably usually on the web. Um, but even if you're not from creative industry, think about ways to create a website that demonstrates some type of work that you are doing, okay? Or add some more information on your LinkedIn that showcases some of the work that you have done for the pandemic. What are some other expectations? Physical distancing and remote, remote work arrangements. Um, one of the new things definitely, um, you know, wasn't really used before, video interviews, right? Um, everyone is currently doing video interviews. It's very common, uh, especially if you're gonna be working from home, 150% that you're, you're gonna get a video interview as well from home. I actually prefer that type of interview. And the reason is because you're in the comfort of your own home. You don't need to go anywhere. We all had probably this experience uh, going to an interview in a winter storm in your winter boots, uh, wearing a nice costume and you need to like change and make sure you're on time. Um, and it might be frustrating and it's stressful and uh, you're, you're afraid you're not gonna be late. Um, so all these things are not relevant for video interviews. Um, you know the time, you just open your computer, you're in a video interview. But there are still some rules around uh, behavior during video interviews, and that's um, you know some of the tips that I can share with you as well. Test your technology. Always test your technology before you go for a video interview. I actually, uh, I was actually on a panel um, before where a candidate um, didn't know how to use uh, headphones. Um, and he had to ask somebody, you know, um, to fix it or something was going on with the sound. So definitely, uh, you know, maybe this person didn't check the technology beforehand. And um, it took about 15 minutes of the interview time to actually figure it, uh, figure it out. So make sure you practice everything. You go on Zoom you, with your friend, you check everything, you make sure it all, it's all working. Yes, situations happen. We might not get internet for, for a second, you know, it might get lost or something, but 
you know, um, that's one thing. But when you're on the screen and trying to fix your technology on the, while being on the screen, that's not really looking good and professional. So make sure you check it ahead of time. Wear professional attire, you're still in the interview. I've seen people wearing hoodies and t-shirts uh, being in the interview with clutter behind their back uh, and family members walking around. Uh, yes, some of us live in small condos, small apartments, and we don't have the luxury of you know, having a separate office for that. Uh, but you can talk to your family members. Uh, you can find, uh, you know, ask them maybe to go somewhere groceries for one hour when you have an interview. Um, so you have uh, time alone uh, in your space, you know, with a clean background, uh, professionally, a professional um, dress or suit, whatever it is. Um, and you look professional like uh, it's a, a real interview. I mean, face-to-face uh, -face interview. Prepare in advance. So prepare the same way you would pre uh, prepare for an actual uh, live interview. Practice your questions. Um, you can actually record yourself on Zoom. Um, I do it all the time before my webinars just to see how much time I spend on responding to every, uh, on um, talking about uh, every slide. I just see, you know, how I look in the screen. Um, so that's actually a good tip for you. You can record yourself on Zoom and watch it afterwards. Um, or ask somebody, a friend or family member to practice with you, or just reach out to career services. We actually provide mock interview support. So if you're feeling nervous before your video interview, let us know. We're going to help you out with that and go for some uh, practice questions. Limit distraction. So as I said, family members walking around, uh, try to, if you have pets, try to occupy them with something while you're in the interview. Um, use professional body language. You're in a camera and it, it does feel weird. Um, you're looking at yourself usually when you're when you're um, talking instead of uh, you know the employer, and it's really hard to look right at the camera. I know I don't do it all the time, but uh, as well try to practice before you go for a video interview. Uh, build rapport. When you're when you have an interview in person, it's really easy to establish this first connection. Um, because you have a handshake and you know you're face to face with the person, uh, you have the, the small talk. Try to do the same thing over Zoom. At least the small talk portion of it, you can definitely try to, to do. Talk about the weather. Talk, ask them how the video interviews are going. Do they like them better than face to face interviews? Um, try to establish this for, uh, first connection with them. Um, it's actually easier to be more authentic when you're in the comfort of your own home because like I said you're not going anywhere you're still at home on your chair with your computer in you know in the familiar environment so it actually for some people it's actually easier because they're not going anywhere and it's uh, kind of releases some stress um, comparing to an actual face-to-face uh, -face interview. Another uh, tip follow up Always follow up. It's the same practice with live interviews um, and um, uh, video interviews. Always follow up with employer with a thank you letter, uh, thank you email. Tell them um, you know that uh, you're very interested in this opportunity. If you need a, a sample of a thank you letter, let us know. We can we can um, definitely share it with you. Um, another way of doing interviews, it's also a, quite a new practice. I participated in those couple of times when I was looking for work in 2020. And it's actually a video interview where you have to record yourself. This part is really uncomfortable for some people because uh, you feel like an actor on the screen. If you're not an actor, that definitely might feel uh, a bit frustrating. Um, usually you have only one chance to record your responses to questions. Uh, it's going to be random questions where you just have to record yourself and send the recording to, um, to the employer. Uh, there are usually practice questions, so always take advantage of that um, and do the practice questions. Usually it's some limited times uh, that you can practice. Um, try to think about what are some questions I might get based on the industry. Uh, read the job posting. See the things that they might require from you. Um, come up with some examples from uh, um, your past experiences or studies that you can share because you never know what, what questions you might have uh, at the video interview. Um, try to, uh, you know, yes, there's no human interaction in this, in, in this type of interview, but um, you can still kind of practice for, for some of the questions. 
Um, if you're not sure how to do it, let us know. We can send you a link to a basic free, uh, free video interview that you can actually um, practice uh, on your own. Um, and make sure you still um, you know, act as your in real interview, wear professional attire, choose a neutral background. So same exact things apply for uh, recorded interviews. Um, I recently spoke with my friend who works in human resources, and she said that many, uh, many people are actually preferring this option now because um, during an interview, you usually have an HR person, a manager and director, for example. So all these people need to find time when they're free for this, um, you know, a person who, who does the interview, um, a job seeker, and everyone needs to find, uh, you know, a time slot that works for all of you. When you do a video recording, you don't need to look for a time slot. You can just watch all the candidates' videos later, right, on, uh, on the time when you're actually available. So uh, some employers are starting to use it um, a lot, especially for first rounds of interviews to kind of, you know, clean up the candidates list and come up with like, I don't know, three, name, three five names of people that they actually want to meet uh, over Zoom afterwards. Um, so this is like a screening type of an interview. Um, don't try to act on the screen. Just try to imagine that you're talking to uh, an individual that asks you questions. And usually actually, they have a person on the screen that asks you questions. Obviously, it's a recorded version, but um, you know, use your imagination. And like I said, we do have a, a practice um, uh, video interview that uh, we can share with you. So feel free to reach out to us. Let's have some fun. Let's try to stay appropriate here because this webinar is being recorded, but try to think of situations, um, you know, things to avoid during video interviews. I'm sure all of you watched some funny videos on YouTube uh, about different situations that happened uh, with people on Zoom. Uh, let's use our imagination. Just type things that you absolutely should not do on a video interview. Again, use Menti for that. Pet running around. It's actually interesting. Um, I read an article um, where, like, the person who wrote the article said that actually uh, it's not bad if you have like a pet, uh, because especially if they have a pet as well, it might be like a common ground for a small talk, which is an interesting perspective actually. Um, so you know, it's it's kind of in between. Fixing your hair, people in the background, for sure. Screaming kids, for some of us, it's a reality, so it's it's hard. So talk maybe to a family member to kind of take care of them. Go intoxicate, for sure. Pick your nose. What else? We have something in chat. Don't put your hands in your nose <laughs> or don't play with your hair or get distracted. Talking over the person giving the interview, interrupting, for sure. That goes for both video interview and real time uh, and real face-to-face uh, -face interview. Clutter in the background, for sure. If you have like a busy background at home, try to find just a plain wall where you can sit, um, you know, just to make sure it's uh, not cluttered. Walking away, <laughs> walking away, for sure. Cell phone notifications left on. Yeah, phone is off. Doesn't matter if it's a video interview or not. Definitely. Uh, lack of lighting, too dark, for sure. That's, that's a really good point. They need to see you. Anything else? Okay. Good advice. Talking too loud, camera too high or too low, for sure. Make sure you wear pants, put on the clothing. <laughs> yeah. How many of us uh, worked uh, in our pajamas? For sure. And uh, you never know if maybe you need to stand up and reach out for something. So make sure you're fully dressed up. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Some more expectations we have from employers. Um, we have some new interview questions that um, 
they are starting to use. For example, what have you been doing to broaden your skills or develop yourself during pandemic? Talk about your education, talk about uh, some new tech skills that you have learned. Maybe you enrolled yourself in some online uh, webinars that you, uh, you took during pandemic. Give all these examples to them. What have you learned about yourself during the pandemic? Talk about how you handle emotion. Um, talk about uh, what you do in a time of stress. If you have to work from home and you're not used to work from home, what, what were some things that you had to adjust? Uh, because if you, if you studied and you're graduating, so it means you figured it out the year before. So you learn how to do it um, from home. So talk about all these experience, how you had to adjust and what strategies you used for that. Talk about your resilience, how you find motivation, um, you know, your attitude towards working from home, um, et cetera. They might ask you, can you work from home? Are you willing to come into the office after the pandemic? As I mentioned, you might be asked that question and uh, people who say, yes, I'm okay with working from home, but I'm okay with going back to the office after a pandemic, um, they might get more chances because, uh, you know, employer might have a plan to go back uh, to the office. Uh, so they have to be ready. Um, you know, you have to be ready for, for that. Ask them questions about uh, onboarding. How are they doing remote onboarding uh, at the moment? Ask them questions about training, um, you know, how is training happening in the job, um, the technology, any, any technology they're using for work. You can definitely ask those questions because you're going to show interest. You're going to show, uh, you know, um, initiative and in, um, finding out all these details so you can be more efficient uh, if you're working from home. Um, Another question, I think that's the last question of this webinar. If you were an employer hiring for your business, let's switch it around. If you were an employer, you have a business and you're hiring during pandemic, which questions would you ask uh, candidates at the interview? Is there, is there anything specific you would like to ask them if you were hiring? How do you handle stress? We had that question. Come up with something else. What else? Are you an independent worker? And give me an example, please. Good one, for sure. Because manager is not around, so you need to figure out ways of working and, and completing tasks. So how can you do it? Give me an example of when you had to adapt, for sure. What have you been doing during this pandemic man to manage your wellness? That's a great question. Self-care. How do you manage your time? For sure. What else? Uh, what is your focus during work hours? Great question. What have you learned about yourself, good and bad? That's a great question. It's a uh, what is your strength, what is your weakness question, but in a different uh, way, right? Have you ever worked in a remote setting? For sure. Uh, for that question, like I said, you can give example of your um, academic project. What time management strategies do you use while working from home? Great one. You can talk about planning out your day, making uh, chunks of time to work on, on different projects, prioritizing, that's another good one. Checking in with your colleagues throughout the day. Okay, great examples, good. So if you, as an employer, uh, would ask those questions, you as a job seeker have to be ready to respond to that question as well. How will you develop a relationship with coworkers? Definitely. How would you develop it if you're working in, uh, you know, different parts of Canada? Like, for example, our team, uh, myself and Alexi, who work in Ontario, Linda and, and uh, our, our boss, Deidre, she's working from, uh, they're, they're both working from BC. And uh, we don't even know when we're going to see each other. I never met them in person. I was hired and I never saw some of the people I, I'm working with. 
Another question in the chat, how would you schedule your day, including lunch hour? That's a good one. For some jobs, it's gonna be very strict. Um, on your computer, you need to log in, log out every time you're off your computer. Uh, for some people, it's kind of, you know, there's more freedom around that. Uh, but people who work with a lot of confidential information, for example, I know in social services, uh, distress centers, for example, um, they have to log in, log out every time they're off the, their computers. It's very, very strict. Great, great questions. Okay, um, the last, I think that's the last, um, one of the last slides. Um, those of you who um, have been following us, you probably saw um, this graph before on our um, other webinars, and it basically explains how employers are hiring. So they actually start from network, uh, from their networks, from people inside their company. And the last resort they use is job boards because they don't like to pay for those job postings. So it's the last thing they use. And people who are looking for a job, they're actually the you know initial thing we do is we go to job boards. And we actually, especially during the pandemic, we need to start from the other side. We need to start from our networks. Um, so that's where um, we can actually use book informational interviews, reach out to people for networking purposes, uh, ask them to meet with you. Remember in the beginning of this presentation, I was talking about um, how you can actually uh, book those informational um, interviews and ask them, how do you adjust? You're in this industry for a few years. I'm just entering this industry. How did you adjust? What are some uh, skills that I need to put in my resume so I have more chances? There are a bunch of virtual, uh, virtual networking events available online. Uh, through Eventbrite, LinkedIn, Meetup, um, you know, if you're not sure where to look, talk to us. We can uh, direct you to those. Uh, reach out to people on LinkedIn, create connections for LinkedIn as well. I talk about it a lot in our social media webinar as well. So please um, go and watch it if, um, if you want to know more. Um, and I also talk about personal branding, how you can um, create your personal brand through uh, social media, um, you know, throughout all your social media. Um, so people that you connect with over social media, they know who you are, what your skills are, uh, et cetera. All of this information is in my previous webinar about uh, social uh, social um, uh, social media and how to use it for job uh, searching. So feel free to use it um, as your guide if you wanna know more or reach out to us and we can definitely have a discussion about it. So very quickly, what is an informational interview? It's a meeting that you arrange and lead. So it's not a job interview. It's a, an interview that you lead to ask questions from the person who works in the industry. It's an opportunity to get some insight about the industry from people who work there. It's a chance to learn about how you might fit in this industry or that job. It's not a job interview, like I said. Um, so there's no pressure uh, you know, for them to like you. Um, it's, you're the one who asks questions, and it's a chance to add another person to your uh, professional network. Some additional tips, uh, add ready to work on your Indeed and LinkedIn. There's a button where you can put, uh, and on your picture on LinkedIn and Indeed, you're gonna have uh, ready to work. So recruiters will see your profile, and they're gonna see that you're ready uh, for opportunities, you're open for work, um, and uh, you know, start applying as well, start to reach out to people. Uh, include experience um, with remote technologies. We talked about it, keywords for your resume, cover letter, interview. Talk about how you use video platforms, share documents like Google Docs, share drive. Um, how do you work with colleagues uh, in different time zones? Add the word, uh, word remote to all of your experience throughout your platforms, throughout your documents. Um, be patient and consistent. Because yes, uh, job searching is tough by itself and pandemic adds another level of stress uh, on top of it. And I'm not gonna lie about that, but it's still possible. Um, I myself and many people I know found jobs throughout pandemic, changed jobs. So life is going on um, and we need to adjust and that's the new reality. Um, so basically I wanna end up with a quote, if opportunity does knock, build a door. So be open-minded, be creative about your job search. I shared some of the tips with you and advice on how you can do it. Um, use all these strategies so you increase your chances of getting an opportunity as soon as possible. 
If you have any questions, if you need any links to our webinars, any resources um, you know, that we talked about um, today, please, if you're a Yorkville student, email to careerservices at yorkville.ca. If you're a Toronto Film School student, careerservices at, at torontofilmschool.ca. Okay, I'm gonna stop uh, sharing screen. Um, and uh, thank you for my colleagues, Alex and Linda, to uh, join, join me right now. Uh, I would like to open the floor for some questions. We have another about 10 minutes um, of our time for some questions uh, that you might have. Feel free to put it in Q&A or in the chat um, below, and we're gonna be happy to respond. Yeah. Uh, I just wanna thank you, Natalia, for a fantastic webinar. Um, it, it's interesting because this webinar was developed at the end of last year. And it's remarkable to see how quickly things change and how much has changed since then. Um, at the same time, uh, it's quite fascinating to see how a lot of this advice about searching for work during the pandemic remains the same. It remains the same as it's always been, which is to get yourself out there um, and this, yep. this time uh, do it virtually to make connections with important people in your industry, um, build relationships as a way of finding work. Um, so of course, you know, a couple of the themes that came out from uh, your webinar were that technology and working from home are the two main largest changes. Um, but you can always find work no matter what the economy. So um, there's been a lot of activity in the chat and we'd love to see more questions from you. It's a very important topic. Um, and you know, now's your chance to just ask our expert, Natalia. What do you think, what's on your mind? Is there anything that she hasn't covered that uh, came up for you as a question? I think this just indicates you have done a we covered everything. Job, <laughs> an exceptional job, Natalia, covering all of the important points. Um, please be aware as well that you can always reach out to us if a question occurs to you after this webinar and at any time at our email addresses that Natalia shared with you. Um, any one of the three of us can get back to you uh, with an answer to your questions. We can help you out. Um, and I also wanted to remind you that um, we conduct these webinars every two weeks at the same time. And so uh, the next one coming up is on May the 6th. That one is gonna be presented by Alexi. And um, again, it's just another angle on this um, challenge that we all face these days of, uh, of how to navigate job search during the pandemic. This one is about preparing for work during COVID. Uh, meaning like, how do you <clears throat> put together, <clears throat> pardon me, a resume and a cover letter and manage interviews and all of that kind of stuff. So um, that's important. We do have a question here, actually, yep. Natalia, before we sign off, how long does it usually take for an employer to call you back after asking about your availability? So um, first of all, um, when you have an interview, I'm not sure, do you mean like, uh, when they ask you during an interview, what, what's your availability? If it's if it's on the interview, then you need to ask them as a wrap-up uh, wrap question, um, how long um, is, is it gonna take for you for, for all the interviews? When are you, when can I expect to hear back from you with, uh, with the next steps? Um, so you need to take an initiative to ask them that question during the interview, um, you know, and if they say, uh, well, right now we're doing interviews and you're probably, if you're going to the next step, um, you're probably gonna hear from us in a week or two. So they need to give you a specific timeline, basically, um, and tell you if if you go to the next step, this is how, um, you know, a week or two that you have to wait. Um, so if you don't hear back from them within a week or two, um, whatever they, they told you, um, you know, don't just, I, I'm telling everyone who's looking for a job. If you had an interview, uh, don't just stop and wait for their call. You continue applying until you sign this offer that's on the, on the table. This is, um, you know, it should be an, like endless process until you actually sign an offer and you start working for that organization because things might change. They might find another candidate. They might freeze their hiring. 
um, you know, and, uh, you know, they, their plans might change. So you don't want to just sit and wait after this one interview um, for them to call you back. Always continue looking until you have this job all set. Exactly. And that just reminds me, Natalia, of a, a reminder for our students that uh, it is always possible to find work no matter what the economic times are like. And during times like this, what it means is that you have to work that much harder at doing it. So it literally looking for a job is going to become your full time job and you should think of it that way. Um, and if you approach it in a very active and proactive way, then you will find a result and you want to know something. If you can learn these skills during a pandemic, you are set for life in terms of your job searching skills, you will always know how to find a job. So um, now's a good time to learn it. One, one other thing I'd like to add. Um, if you do get an email from the employer asking for your availability, you send it and a couple of days pass and you're still waiting for a reply, it is perfectly acceptable to send back an email saying, hey, I'm just following up on our, your last request. Uh, let me know if there's any feedback around X, Y, or Z. So you could always send a follow-up to the employer as well, asking for clarification or thanking them for the time. Yeah, because if they're ask, asking you about your availability, maybe, maybe they're considering you for, for the position. So it's it's totally fine to follow up. Good idea. Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, we're right at 11 o'clock. Um, that's specific standard time, uh, 11, 12, 2 or 3 o'clock, depending on where you're tuning in from. So thank you so much for joining us today. And again, we really hope to see you back here in 